Hi, boys and girls. We're going to finish up chapter six in Ramona and her father, the sheep suit. If you remember last time, Ramona was trying to get to be in the church nativity scene. And they said that if she had a sheep costume, she could get one. And her father was pretty angry that she volunteered her mother to make one. And he even said that she'd become a spoiled brat if they keep, kept giving in to her. So let's see if Ramona gets her costume and let's see what happens next. The days that followed were difficult for Ramona, who was now cross with her cross father. He was mean talking about her behind her back that way. Well, what's eating you? He finally asked Ramona. Nothing, Ramona scowled. She would not tell him why she was angry without admitting she had been eavesdropping. Eavesdropping means listening in to somebody else's conversation when it's not yours. And then there was Beezus, who went around smiling and looking serene. That means just perfect. Perhaps because Mrs. Mester had given her an A on her creative writing composition and read it aloud to the class. But more likely because she was already practicing her part as Mary. Having a sister who tried to act like Mary was not easy for a girl who felt as Ramona did. And the costume. Mrs. Quimby found time to bleach the old bathrobe in the, in the washing machine, but after that, nothing happened. The doctor she worked for was so busy because of all the earaches, sore throats, and flu that came with winter weather that she was late coming home every evening. On top of that, Ramona had to spend two afternoons watching Howie's grandmother sew on his sheep suit because arrangements had been made for Ramona to go to Howie's house if Mr. Quimby could not be home after school. This week, he had to collect unemployment insurance and take a civil service examination for a job in the post office. Ramona studied Howie's sheep suit, which was made out of fluffy white acrylic. The ears were lined with pink and Mrs. Kemp was going to put a zipper down the front. The costume was beautiful, soft, and furry. Ramona longed to rug her cheek against it and hug it and take it to bed with her. And when I finish Howie's costume, I'm going to make one for Willa Jean, said Mrs. Kemp. Willa Jean wants one too. This was almost too much for Ramona to bear. Besides, her shoes felt tighter than ever. She looked at Willa Jean, who was clomping around the house on her little tuna can stilts. Messy little Willa Jean in a beautiful sheep suit she didn't even need. She would only spoil the furry cloth by dribbling apple juice down the front and spilling graham cracker crumbs all over it. People said Willa Jean behaved just the way Ramona used to, but Ramona could not believe them. A week before the Christmas program, Mrs. Quimby managed to find time to buy a pattern during her lunch hour, but she did not find time to sew for Ramona. Mr. Quimby, on the other hand, had plenty of time for Ramona. Too much, she was beginning to think. He nagged Ramona. She should sit up closer to the table so she wouldn't spill so much. She should stop making rivers in her mashed potatoes. She should wring her out her washcloth instead of leaving it sopping in the tub. Look at the circles of rust her tin can stilts had left on the kitchen floor. Couldn't she be more careful? She should fold her bath towel in half and hang it up straight. How did she ever expect it to dry when it was all wadded up for Pete's sake? She found a sign in her room that said, a messy room is hazardous to your health. That was too much. Ramona marched out to the garage where her father was oiling the lawnmower so it would be ready when spring came and said, a messy room is not hazardous to my health. It's not the same as smoking. You could trip and break your arm, her father pointed out. Ramona had an answer. I always turn on the light and sort of feel along the floor with my feet. You could smother in old newspaper stuffed animals and hula hoops if the mess gets deep enough. And her father added, Miss Radar feet. Ramona smiled. Daddy, you're just being silly again. Nobody ever smothered in a hula hoop. You never can tell, said her father. There is always a first time. Ramona and her father got along better for a while after that, and then came the terrible afternoon when Ramona came home from school to find her father closing the living room windows, which had been wide open even though the day was raw and windy. So that's how the author tells you something's about to change. She said they got along until that one terrible afternoon, and there was a slight, faint 
smell of cigarette smoke in the room. Why, there's Henry running down the street, said Mr. Quimby, his back to Ramona. He may make it to the Olympics, but that poor old dog of his won't. Daddy, said Ramona. Her father turned Ramona. Ramona looked him in the eye. You cheated. Mr. Quimby closed the last window. What are you talking about? You smoked and you promised you wouldn't. Ramona felt as if she were the grown-up and he were the child. Mr. Quimby sat down on the couch and leaned back as if he were very, very tired, which made some of the anger drain out of Ramona. Ramona, he said, it isn't easy to break a bad habit. I ran across one cigarette, an old stale cigarette in my raincoat pocket and thought it might help if I smoked just one. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Hearing her father speak this way as if she really was a grown-up melted the last of Ramona's anger. She turned into a seven-year-old again. Oh, there she's mad at him. He's trying. She turned into a seven-year-old again and climbed on the couch to lean against her father. After a few moments of silence, she whispered, I love you, Daddy. He tousled her hair affectionately and said, I know you do. That's why you want me to stop smoking, and I love you too. Even if I'm a brat sometimes, even if you're a brat sometimes, Ramona thought a while before she sat up and said, then why can't we be a happy family? For some reason, Mr. Quimby smiled. I have news for you, Ramona. He said, we are a happy family. We are? Ramona was skeptical. Yes, we are. Mr. Quimby was positive. No family is perfect. Get that idea out of your head. And nobody is perfect either. All we can do is work at it. And we do. Ramona tried to wiggle her toes and tied her shoes and considered what her father had said. Lots of families wouldn't draw, lots of fathers wouldn't draw pictures with their little girls. Her father bought her paper and crayons when he could afford them. Lots of mothers wouldn't step over a picture that spread across the kitchen floor while cooking supper. Ramona knew mothers who would scold and say, pick that up. Can't you see I'm trying to get supper? Lots of big sisters wouldn't let their little sister go along when they interviewed someone for creative writing. They would take more than their fair share of gummy bears because they were bigger. And Ramona decided her father was probably right, but she couldn't help feeling they would be a happier family if her mother could find time to sew that sheep costume. There wasn't much time left. All right, we've got one more chapter to read. I think we'll get it done this week. It's called Ramona and the Three Wise Persons. So let's see if Ramona gets that sheep costume.